All right, what's up, Dragon Brew? Today, we're gonna be playing some Golgari, but a little bit different because I haven't really done anything with the descend mechanic yet, and I figured now's a good time as any. So today, we're gonna be descending with some Golgari cards. Now, one thing I will note about this list is we're not gonna be playing good old Shieldred, and even though I think the card is good and probably even belongs in this list, I wanna try out a bunch of other stuff first, so we'll see how that goes. But this is going to start with Stalactite Stalker. This is a card I've been wanting to put into a few decks, partly because it has Menace and it's a decent one drop, but it does get bigger every turn. So it's actually kind of nice. And it does double as removal and sometimes can sacrifice itself to help us hit our Descend triggers. We're going to play Death Bonnet Sprout because this just mills something every turn. And we only have a handful of spells. Mostly everything's a permanent, so we should be able to trigger our Descend as well with this. And then down the road, maybe we just get a bigger creature. Bitter Triumph is a good removal, lets us actually discard something, so that's actually kind of nice. And Souls of the Lost also lets us put stuff in our graveyard. So we have a lot of things to trigger Descend if we need to for our various cards. Uh, we're going to play some Mosswood Dread Knights just because another way to draw cards. And this does go to the graveyard and come back, which is super nice. Then we have Teachings of the Kirin, because this again, mills stuff into our graveyard. We love that. And it can get us a body to block with. It does have some upside to it. And we're going to try some Urborg Lurgoyf. Now, this isn't going to be able to kicked, get kicked for blue because we just don't have a way to produce the mana. But it's totally okay even if we're just using it just for black because we're going to put so many things in the graveyard. This is probably still going to be a sizable body. Also, before we get to the rest of the cards, let me tell you about our friends over at Cool Stuff Inc. real quick. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of this channel. And you can show your support while getting 5% off your entire order by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs. And support this channel by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Okay, now we get into some of the more fun cards that this deck's going to play. We're going to play Glissa Sunslayer, obviously, because this card's good, and it can help us dig, and it can move stuff, so I does a lot of things for us, but we're gonna try the Myco Tyrant. This is a card <clears throat> I've seen a few people try with various success. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a go here. I think we can put enough stuff in the graveyard that we should be able to get a fair amount of tokens, but we'll see. And we're going to play Tyvar, Jubilant Brawler, partly because he mills, and that's nice, right? We're trying to hit our Descend stuff, but also could let us get some key cards back, right? At two mana, like being able to return something like Souls of the Lost or Urberg Lorgoyf could do a lot for this deck, honestly, to keep those big threats hitting all the time. And we're going to try Corpse of the Lost. Since we're going to go ahead and be descending anyway, if we can just make a pile of skeletons, this could be pretty good, especially against the control decks, since you're going to be able to just kind of keep your creatures flowing. So we'll see if it works out. Of course, we're going to be playing Blossoming Tortoise because this actually like fills the graveyard and kind of keeps that whole thing going turn after turn. And we're going to try some Virtue of Persistence. Now, I debated on which removal card I wanted to play, but I settled on this because it does gain us life and we don't have any life gain really in the list. And we also have the ability to return stuff after we filled up the graveyard. Now, I don't know how often we're going to get to seven mana, but we'll see. But those are going to be all the cards we're going to be playing today. If you want the full deck list, it will be at the end of the video, like always. Or you go down to the description, look for the blue arrows. It'll take you to our Moxfield link where you can see today's deck and a pile of other really sweet stuff you can play in standard right now. But let's go see if Descend can get us some wins. Oh, this is almost keepable. Like, playing Souls of Lost. We didn't, eh, we got a mulligan. So close, though. I will say, uh, we're going to keep this. I was pretty close to trying a build that was just using... Actually, I'm actually this is weird, but I'm going to get rid of Mosswood Dread Knight here. And I'm actually going to play these, I think, just like this. I, I thought about playing something with a bunch of fungus because there's like just enough to make things what I would call playable. Like not stellar by any stretch, but like just enough that you could probably justify it with Descend. So it did was a curiosity. I don't know if I'll end up doing that or not in the future. We'll see how long things go with this season. They're going to play a Dread Knight though. All right, Ooh, another death bonnet. But I think I'm gonna do this first in case they have like Brotherhood's End or something here. We're not overcommitting. Ooh, losing a Glissa there sucks though. Plus a Glissa and a Virtue. That's eh, a little tough. It is the downside to playing Descend decks. Like you kind of want some redundancy because you're gonna see a lot of things go to the graveyard, and it's not gonna feel great. 
Either everything's getting swept, or at least the lag tyke stalker's dying here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I guess it didn't have to die. Good thing we did draw one of these other virtues. That's pretty nice. Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on... On... This guy, I guess. And then we'll play this. Alright, get our attacks in. I'm just going to assume, even if wrongfully, they don't have a sweeper, or they would have gone ahead and played it. Because, like, why run out the Glissa if you were going to end up sweeping the board or something? Oh, so just Red Knight time. They really don't have it. Alright. Wow, we can't get creatures in the graveyard to save. Oh, this is nice, though. Because we did flip some permanents into the yard. I don't hate that. Um, not a lot we can do here. So let's just attack with... Are we only attacking for four? I mean, I guess I could... Uh, what's the trade-off here? If we got rid of the stalker... Nah, I can't, really. Uh, am I giving up a death bonnet sprout here? Yeah, the opponent's low enough. I'm just getting in there with all of it. Like, force the issue. Alright, they're gonna take seven? Cool. Oh, they're gonna kill our stalker. That's why. Well, sadly, we can't activate this because it has to be... Oh, wait, no. This doesn't have to be... Oh. Hold up. Nah, we let that ride. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the Myco, Myco Tyrant. I, I just want to see how this plays out. Normally, though, I probably would have sacrificed that and killed the Moss with Dread Knight or something. But this is a big enough pile of duders. Yeah, that doesn't matter. We're attacking with a pile of things here. GG's opponent. Wow, and a tie bar. Nice. Alright, well, yeah, everything's attacking. Sure, we'll exile a thing, put a plus one on something. I don't think it matters. Uh, sure. I don't know. That's going to get blocked anyway. Put it, put it on another thing. Didn't matter, though. All those little fungus are going to get in there. Ooh, have to mulligan that. This we can keep. Question is, what do we get rid of? It's probably going to be... Sadly, I think just the Myco Tyrant. All right, we need to draw removal is what we need to draw. Because, like, that's the only way you're going to beat the red deck. So you got to have some amount of removal. If you don't, like, you're just spinning your wheels into nothing. All right. Still not it. That's unfortunate. All right, we'll just play the body. I mean, unfortunately, because of... Etchings of Commando, a bunch of your stuff won't go to the graveyard, so that kind of works against us here. But, the idea is, maybe force them to use removal to kill the knight, get some damage in. Okay, well, a rage is incoming here, so we'll just block here. Like, they're not making that attack without a rage, right? Yeah, obviously. But we at least get rid of the Commando and it's out the way now. We're at 10, opponent's got 3 cards. This at least becomes more manageable here. I wouldn't call it great, but definitely more manageable. Um, yeah, let's go with this. Because then if this dies, it at least puts one more thing in the graveyard and our Souls of the Lost has something going for it. We also get a turn where we Stalker, Stalker, Souls, possibly. Alright, so we're at seven. And then we just have to hope we don't die to some combination of rages and whatnot here, but... Uh, we'll discard a card. It's gonna be this. Just so we can have max blockers. Alright, and those will be two twos. I don't know how we get out of this. <laughs> like, it's looking rough, but... Alright, Chandra. Fair. Alright, we go to six. Aww. 
And an adversary. Sure, just an adversary. All right. Fair. I mean, I was going to say, if you attack, we are most definitely blocking opponent. Yeah, this was not a good attack by them. Unless their hand is something very tricky, which could be. Could be. But for the time being, I think we're just going to send both of these over here. Since they're down to one card in hand. Play this guy. In the turn. We can also get to three things in our graveyard automatically for our death bonnet sprout by doing this. Uh, where egg stalker's power. Yep. Let's don't even let that attack. Though they can try again next turn. But we can remove it. Oh no, we can't. We have to remove it next turn. Oops. Oh crap. I need something to discard to this. Or sacrifice to it. Um... Hmm. And we're at six. All right. We're going to attack for three. And then we're just going to get rid of that. All right. I probably could have attacked for five as well and been okay, but... Or four, I guess it would have been at the time. All right. So that's going to shoot us for three. Ooh, let us find an untapped land. Let this backfire on the opponent. Not getting that squee out. I mean, though, we do die to a lightning strike now if it just comes off the top. We did not find an untapped land. That is very sad. Okay, well, this is kind of all we can do. We now die to a shock if they get squee out. Or play with fire. Whatever the equivalent is there. Rage doesn't particularly kill us here. Though it would allow the Bloodthirsty Adversary to trade with the Souls of the Lost. Which is tough. Yep. And if they have a Rage, we still die to the 1-1. They don't have it, though, so that's good. Oh, that's huge. That is... I mean, wow. Wow. Actually, what do you have in your graveyard? Just that left? I think I do want to kill this still. Just because that extra one point could be a real problem. I'm going to attack with just a five here. Because again, we're low enough that I don't want to risk anything silly happening. Get rid of this. Alright. So being at five gives us at least a little bit of wiggle room. Now the opponent's staring at three, five, six souls of the loss. Got to get two more things to get Squee back. Three more things, because you got to be able to remove four. All right, Felden. That's tough, because that will give them the ability to... Oh, they get to attack over the top. Oh, that sucks. That's super unfortunate. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. Goif... Put enough things in the graveyard, friend. Come on. There you go. That's all we needed. Any two of these that connect, that's game. Oh, that was so close. GG's. That was a good game. Wow. Wow, at one life. Woo! Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. All right, let's play this tapped. gonna be a little bit of slow going but not the worst Let's see if we can find an untapped land here fire off this lurgoif all right playing some legions that that was not good and that can't block so I might as well attack not that it matters we have menace anyway getting stuck on two is real bad here we really, really, really needed an untapped land. Legamos. All right. We take four. This is one of those decks. Sure. I guess we're going to have to kill Legamos, huh? Yep, because we ain't doing much else with this mana right now. 
Uh, we're discarding Tortoise. Alright, let's pass. I mean, I guess I could have got the plus one if I'd have done it. But, okay. I was curious if there was going to be anything else I wanted to kill more. <laughs> we'll discard a Tortoise. Oh, come on. We can beat this deck, too. We just got stuck. This is so sad. Yeah, attack. We just take it. I mean, the fact that we're still at 15 feels pretty good, all things considered, right now. Now I feel like we're just being teased. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. I'm not blocking with this guy. Let's go. Let's see how bad it is. You got another Mishra? They did. All right. Well, that hurts. Take five. Oh my gosh, how brutal. Yeah, I don't think we can do enough here. Like, we have one creature in our graveyard. Uh, is there any way we just don't die here? I mean, I guess we do this, but if they have... They probably have a removal card they haven't had to use yet, right? I mean, I've got four cards in hand. And we've played virtually nothing that's been threatening till right now. Okay, that's still going to be a lot of damage. Alright. Okay, I guess we block block? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I kind of have to or else we just die during their turn. Now we need a removal card. It's a bad part. Like, I need something else. Yeah, this might be too little too late. The best we can do here. Two things in the graveyard now. Let's go ahead and play this with a kicker of one. Wow, like no help there either. Oh, that's tough. I mean, we could attack, I could remove the counters off the other thing, but then we just die. Yeah, that's tough. I gotta, I gotta find a removal card for Mishra, basically. Okay, they got us. We're dead now. Alright. Ugh. Man, we... No land killed us that game. I think we could have won that one. Oh, we'll keep it, but this feels ugly. Alright, Restless Cottage first. And here, I think we're probably just going to try to draw a card with the Dread Knight. I'm not opposed to just playing it as a 3-2, but I think here, because our hand's so bad, as much as I would like to uh, jump out to a little bit of an aggressive start, ooh, that's not helping either. Adversary. Just running an adversary out there with no backup, huh? That's peculiar. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Just to see what the opponent's up to. I was tempted to just play Lorgoyf there and then play two two mana things next turn. Because, like, if they Brutal Cathar or Knight, we don't care, really? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not that big a deal. We're kind of okay with that. I didn't really want to waste removal on, removal on that. Like, I probably will. But wasn't my first choice. So now... Let's go ahead and do that. Since they obviously didn't want this in the way. And then we'll uh, let them take their turn. And then we can just use Bitter Triumph on something if we feel we really need to. And then next turn, we could Goyf plus Souls of the Lost, maybe? Oh, that's a small bit of a problem. Hmm. Okay. I mean, they probably choose Bitter Triumph, because if they don't, we just kill that and continue on with our business. So it's fine. 
They could also just call Virtue of Persistence, too, and just play the long game, depending on what their hand looks like. Yeah, I think that's kind of the move for them here. You either call Bitter Triumph, yeah, exactly, or you're just calling Virtue of Persistence, I think. Yeah, I'm down. Like, that seems more than reasonable. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. Let's kick a goif. Actually, we could kick a goif for double here. Um, yeah, let's do that. Still only got two things in the yard. Wow, that was brutal. But, but... Oh, we did lose a tie bar. Lost a mycoid tyrant. Ugh. Okay. Oh, we only got one thing in the graveyard. Because the other was just the Dread Knight that we already had. That's tough. Yeah, that was about as bad as that could have been. And we lost two lands to make it harder for us to cast the Virtue of Persistence. Alright, Cathar gets a thing. Sounds good. Yep. We're still at 18 against the really aggro decks, so this doesn't feel terrible. Yeah, no blocks. Alright, got a creature in there. Good job. Good job, deck. Alright, so now I have to decide how badly I want to use Bitter Triumph on something, if we want to. But I think we're going to go with this. This has more value. Uh, we'll get that. And we could play this. And play Souls of the Lost. Just say, F it, let's go. Uh, do I want to sacrifice the Hulk? Hmm. I could sacrifice a land too, though, right? Two, four, six. But we just got Virtue of Persistence. Uh, you know what? I'm going to gamble. Let's discard a card here. I mean, they got to have a lot of answers, right? For this to work out for them. So, sure. I mean, Peacekeeper's not stopping anything anymore, so you can just trade. Yep, because you're not want to give us a 5-6 Goyf back here. Alright. Now we got Creature Land active. We've got Virtue Persistence we can play. We've got a 10-11 Souls of the Lost. We're kind of cooking right now. Night Errant? Sure. You got it. Do they have anything good to get? I don't think so. I mean, we could get their Brutal Cathar. That's amusing. Um, yeah, opponent's at 26. We're at 15. We're, these are just such high life totals here. Um, Alright, we'll just go with this. Because I'm assuming they're going to play their Intrepid Adversary... Try to pump their team for a whole pile. We'll block some things. We'll get back their Brutal Cathar to get rid of their adversary. Or we could just get back a big Lurgoyf and just not care that they have an adversary. Like, that's a real thing. Just say we're going to just keep putting giant bodies in the way. Like, what you going to do? Yeah. Get to pump it two times. Two times. Two times. One thing is, what do they really attack with here? Like, Adeline and, and Knight? Like, neither of those is particularly threatening enough on their own. Yeah, I was going to say, I could... Uh, hmm. View the battlefield. So we could Cathar, the Cathar, do that whole situation. Or we just get rid of this. Go to our graveyard real quick, because I think just Goy... Oh, actually, my Quid Tyrant. But I don't have anything to put stuff in the graveyard right now. Goyf is probably acceptable. But I'm going to go to the opponent's graveyard. Give us their Brutal Cathar. Let's just get rid of this. That just takes threats away that we don't even have to waste time on. Alright, let's go here. Attacking with this, and probably just that. Removing this. 
You would like to double block? I would accept such exchanges. Because I'm basically trading a reckless, restless cottage for either Adeline or Knight. Or if they double block with something that involves Brutal Cathar, we'll just trade that. We're basically trading a cottage to get a Goyf at that point. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll keep this. We're going to Bitter Triumph straight up kill something. Looks like we might have to. Alright, pass turn. I'm gonna go ahead and waste this. Uh, I have to discard a card. I mean, if we get discard a land, is that fine? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just force the issue. This is usually lately when you've been seeing that, it's like the Boros tokens, whatever deck. So if we can keep pressure up while they have a slow start, this could benefit us. It also means our hand is probably a bunch of, like, knight errants and other things. Yeah. Alright. Gonna discard? Alright, so they are digging. Alright. Then we're gonna keep on trucking. Oh yeah, that's exactly where, if you're, if they're blocking here, that's perfect for us. Put one creature in the yard. Okay. Not great. But hey, we're still in the advantage position, so we're not going to freak out yet. A lot of these versions don't play much removal either. I think my version, I added some, like, get lost or something. But without that, they don't have a lot going for them. Yeah, I think we're getting in there. Go, go, Gadget Glissa. Man, we are definitely going to draw a card. Alright, play this as a gigantic body. I will discard a card. Which is going to be that. Alright. Yeah, the problem they have with that deck is if you are playing really big creatures... Even if they get their things that are giving you, like, the plus ones and everything, it's just not enough. Like, you need even more than that. Yep. Oof. Lots of lands here. This is tough. Um... Uh, yeah, might as well. Because they're blocking or they're not, right? Let's go. Get rid of that, I guess. Let's draw. Okay, that's not bad. Play this out front. Alright. The opponent's at 9, and now they're basically blocking every turn now. It's like an alpha strike attack here doesn't do much for them. By the way, I'm holding onto the Merrick, so if I do get another Lorgoyf, I could use it for blue mana. Yeah, Knight Errant kinda has to just sit back and block here. Which is fine. Yep, opponent scooped. Yeah, the tough situation here is once we activate this and attack, we just attack with everything, right? So the best they could do is block, block, those are trading. They take three, four, five. They're at four, but now they don't even have their biggest things. They just have tokens against us still having three, four creatures. So, yeah. And, and that's just unfortunate. That's just sort of what happens when you play that deck. But the trade-off is that deck's really good. And if it gets a super fast start, I would have struggled to keep up with it with drawing as many lands as I drew for sure. So, you know, just kind of the way magic goes sometimes. All right, let's keep it. Let's go with a Sprout. Mostly because Sprout will put something in during our upkeep, so we at least get one trigger on the Stalker if we don't get anything else we want to play. Though that being said, we might also want to just Virtue kill. Yeah, exactly. Something on their side of the board. So there you go. Sometimes things work out like that. 
And then when they get their big 6-6, six, six, we'll just have to cry ourselves to sleep or something. We'll worry about that when we get there. Fight rigging. Okay. That's unfortunate. Okay, this is actually not bad. This worked out okay. I have to play this, though. Unfortunately, we'll go ahead and just tap that for black now. Play this. Attack. In the turn. And then we'll bitter triumph whatever... Oh, a second fight rigging. Gross. Okay, well... That made our turn not really do much of anything. Because my plan was to kill whatever these fight riggings were going to target. Uh, that ended up not being a thing. So now, unless we draw something cheap to play... Okay, that works. I was going to say, we don't really have a play, but... Go ahead and attack. In the turn. Probably a big Dracosaur or something here. Nope, not with the tap land it won't be. Alright, mill some more things. Alright, that's a creature... That's a creature. All right, so we got one of them to turn into a real body. And I think we keep attacking here. All right, in the turn. And then now we could also use the Stalker. So we have a backup removal card, potentially. Dracosaur, with that being lethal, I think we're just going to target the Dracosaur. I'm going to pay the 3 life, since we're still at 20. And that'll do it. Oh, alright. Survived. Yeah, don't blame the opponent for keeping that, because if the Yearling survives even once, and you turn it into a 4-3, and then to a 5... Well, it would have been straight up getting to a 7 pretty easy with those. But yeah, we just got lucky. Had the removal, had the things to slow the opponent down, and never had to deal with whatever was under the fight ratings. Yes, we will keep this. Though it's a little dicey because this comes into play tap, so maybe that's not the uh, best keep. But I'm going to go ahead and play this tap turn one anyway. Mm, I'm almost regret not having an extra body there. But this works out anyway. Let's go with this. We'll go ahead and gain our three while that's still small. And then we'll see if we can bait out some removal by playing the Dread Knight and the Sprout first. Oh, hey. Love when they do that. Not even exaggerating. We do genuinely like when they do that. So let's go... Sprout Kirin? They might deal, like, one damage to everything, but, like, if so, I guess we're fine with that. Nah, let's do this in the Dread Knight. Because there are a few red decks still playing that. And I mean, if they use two of them here, we wouldn't care that much. And if the opponent starts sending damage at our creatures instead of us, that's a win. Yeah, they're debating right now. Do they even want to waste a removal on it or not? So that's good. Because they don't have an aggressive hand here. Squee. Oh, so I guess they're just going to trade a squee here? That's what they were debating? Interesting. You only have one card in the yard. Oh, two. Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll still make that trade. I'm good with that. I mean, who knows? Maybe they have multiple squee or something, too. I, that could be real. Uh, I think we go ahead and draw. Oh, sad that that's going to be tapped, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and play... Actually, you know what? Let's just play this back out. It's a three power. No attack. I mean, we're at 16, so we're forcing them to deal with a lot of stuff here before our life total becomes a real issue. And basically, we block Squee in exchange to take one point. Oh, 3-3 three, three in the air. All right, well, that's going to force us to uh, have to act where we don't want to. That's tough. All right, this is going to... Okay, this actually does a thing. So let's get this. Let's play this 
So we're putting a lot of stuff in the yard this turn. We're going to get the Myco Tyrants. We're going to attack. Still only two things, three, eh, two things in the yard. And this is going to make four things right now? Yeah, we're attacking. If you want to trade for a 1-1, one, one, that's fine. Okay, they don't. Fair enough. All right. Now we got four bodies we can attack with. Well, it's in a real racing situation here, though. Four is going to put us down to nine. That's real. We can get rid of Squee next turn. Yeah, if they have a burn spell or rage, and yeah, they could kill us over two turns. Like, this is real. I only have six. All right, so they're just saying they're they're playing to top deck then next turn, right? Because that puts us. Oh, it only puts us down to four. So yeah, that would just kill us. So we need a removal card here. That is not it. I think they got us, right? Because at six, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. We can do 15 and we can attack. Oh, they can block the land. Wait, 6, 10, 11, 14, 15. Is it exactly 16? If we attack with our creature land? Wow. Yeah, remove Squee. That's tough. Because they block four, and then you can't even block the seven or the three, because that tramples. Wow, we got there for Xaxes, y'all. And that's crazy, considering the cards the opponent had with that start. If we didn't have that removal card to get rid of the Swift Spear, particularly even to gain three, we could have been in trouble this game, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's the block. Wow. Love it. All right, so there's a couple of things here that make this a little bit difficult. Um, obviously, having Shieldred would be good, right? We can't deny having Shieldred would, would be a good option. So that's That hurts a little bit. Uh, Stalactite Stalker was okay. I don't know if I need four of them. It's tough. Like, Tyvar's okay. Micro Tyrant's fine. It's like there's a lot that are just okay here. I... In, Really, Blossoming Tortoise feels like it's at its best when you have the Myco Tyrant, right? You're putting three in, and then Myco Tyrant's making all those things. That should be pretty cool. But I think if we wanted to, cut a Stalker. We Though we did use the removal once or twice, not, not often. Bitter Triumph came through fine, love that. But one of the things I'm thinking about, and while Teachings of Kirin, we I think we won that last game against Mono Red with the Teachings, which is really cool, because it got us all the extra bodies. So I think Terra Sunder being in here could be very good as well. I just don't know where we find room. I think if I was playing best of three, I would totally play it. But I just don't know if we have room or not. Like the toughest part is if anything goes, it's probably teachings. And that's a hard one. Like honestly, Corpse of the Lost, believe it or not, this card didn't do anything for us. Like I think I only even drew it once or twice. And it's just, it's so slow. You know, I think just being able to return it to your hand, make a 2-2. Two -two, I think where this card would shine is in the matchups against the control stuff, where you're going to turn like 15, 16, whatever. Could be really good. But otherwise, this is just kind of like pay three mana, make a 3-2. Like, end of your turn. Like, if, even if it was beginning of like your combat step, so then you could make another creature that turn that you could attack with the following turn, it'd probably be okay. But just how it's worded, it doesn't do enough. So, yeah, I think I'm cutting that. That's going to be the first thing we cut. And then we could go down either one Micro Tyrant or one Tyvar, I think, would be acceptable if you want to do that. But I think we go two Shieldred. But yeah, Shieldred's just a good magic card. I think we go ahead and play the two Shieldred. Not much to say about that. And then... One Terra Sunder, maybe. Even though we don't want spells, we want permanence. I just like having the option that this provides at instant speed. I mean, we could replace, like, one Virtue if you wanted to or something like that. I think that would be reasonable. 
Uh, but nothing that you're really worried about. But I think this still leaves the bulk of the deck intact if you want to do stuff. You still have removal in the way of Bitter Triumph. You still have Terra Sunder. Now we have Shieldred to gain some life late in the game. We have Virtues of Persistence, which is good. So yeah, I don't mind this. I think this actually could be a pretty solid final deck. But yeah, overall, this one this was an interesting one. It was fun. But I think it does have some weaknesses. Like I would say, if we're not playing cut downs, that's going to make you a little susceptible to mono red, right? Unless you draw early virtue or you get the draws where you're like kill a creature, kill a creature. You kick a uh, goif and you have like this seven, six goif or something, right? Like that, those would be really hard for mono red to beat, but that's tough, right? But if you do get those, hey, you can probably still win those matchups. That matchup's going to be a little tough. Obviously, sweepers are going to be a little bit of a problem. However, mycoid tyrants and tyvar... You do have the creature lands, so like you can win those fights, but those are going to be a little bit tough at times. Otherwise, against other creature matchups, this actually isn't terrible, right? You just have so many big bodies, like the Souls of the Lost, the Goyfs, those are all really big. Now we have Shieldred, which is big. Myco Tyrant, we could be big, right? So just a lot of stuff for your opponent to have to deal with. But overall, I think this is actually a lot of fun. If you're looking to play Descent, this is one way to do it and take advantage of some of the stuff with like Souls of the Lost. Let me also say that Squirming Emergence could be a good card in here as well. It could be a cheap way to get back Virtue of Persistence, get back any of your other creatures. So if you don't want to play Tyvar, maybe you don't have them. Squirming Emergence is actually a reasonable card you could play here too, and probably could still be pretty good. Now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Old One-Eye. This is a card that got reprinted, or actually got printed, in the 40k set, which is pretty sweet. But I feel like this is one of the few times where we've done the, like universes beyond stuff where we didn't get it quite right on this card's power level because this is always one of those cards or a characters in 40k that gets talked about quite a bit but the interesting thing about this card is this type of deck if you're playing this in commander it could be the right type of card to play right like you can get it in the graveyard by discarding it to a ton of other things we have and then you just discard it getting into play and you got this big body that gives all your other stuff trample which is huge when you have these 10 and 12 power creatures that can't quite punch through so while the card I don't think necessarily is super powerful compared to what its lore is, it actually is a very useful card in the right type of decks, and you can pick these up pretty cheap, probably for under a dollar. And if you're looking for some other fun Golgari lists, we have one where we just wrecked our opponent's entire board with a good old black creature that you probably don't like that much, but you should check it out. That's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.